Hello guys, have you ever wondered what Unity coroutines are and how you can use them? I am Chris Dev and in this video I will explain you what they are and how they can be useful for your projects. So, what is a coroutine and how does it work exactly? In Unity, a coroutine allows you to spread tasks across several frames. It is a method on which you can pause the execution and return control to Unity and later on continue executing the method from where you left off. So a coroutine is basically a method which is split into different parts with a special keyword and then these parts are executed one after the other depending on the wait time that we have set between them. You can view it as like running a for each loop on all of these separated method parts. One important thing when working with coroutines is that a coroutine, in order for it to be run, it needs a mono behavior. So you either run the coroutine on a class which inherits from a mono behavior or you need to pass a mono behavior reference to a non mono behavior class so that it can run the coroutine. Having said all of that, you should also know that Unity coroutines aren't related to asynchronous programming. They are still executed on the Unity's main thread. If you want to use multi threaded code within Unity, you should try using the job system in Unity Dots. So, let's see a quick example of a coroutine. In here, we have a warrior class which inherits from a mono behavior. We have an onDeath method which is called when the warrior dies, and in the body of this method is where the coroutine is started. A coroutine isn't an ordinary method, and we can distinguish them by looking at the return value, which is of type IEnumerator. IEnumerator is an interface type from C -sharp, and it's used to support iteration. When iEnumerator is used for coroutines, it will cause the execution of your code to pause and resume at various points that you determine. Looking at the body of the coroutine, we can see that the first thing we do is playing a sound effect. After we play the audio clip, we can see that we pause the execution of the method and wait for 3 seconds before we continue on with the rest of the code. This yield return keyword is the point where execution pauses and resumes later. After those 3 seconds have passed, the execution of the coroutine continues, we play some blood effects, then wait for another 2 seconds before we play a falling animation. After that the coroutine ends. And one important thing that you should know is that if the game object on which the coroutine is running gets destroyed, the coroutine is automatically stopped. So let's go into Unity and see those coroutines in action. In here I have set up an example project which has this levitating cube and the ground object. And when the game is running and I press space, the cube falls to the ground. And at that point when the cube collides with the ground, I want to start a coroutine. So let's get into coding. Under the scripts folder, I have only two scripts. This is for controlling the cube, so when I press the space button, I uh, set the is kinematic property to false, so that the cube falls to the ground, and then the cube collision class which is currently empty. Here we are going to detect the collision between the cube and the ground and then start a coroutine and uh, this script is going to be attached to the cube. For collision detection I will be using the onCollisionEnter method. I have put a tag on the ground object so let's check if I have collided with, with the ground itself. So if it's not the ground, return. Also, I'm going to add a boolean variable so that I prevent uh, multiple collisions. And if collided is true, return. And after this, I'm going to set it to true. So at first it's going to be false, when I hit the ground it's going to become true. At this point we want to start a coroutine, but since we don't have a coroutine yet, let's first make one. So private, I enumerator is the return type. Collision coroutine. For now I would just want to debug that lock that I have collided with the ground. Collision detected. 
and we can see that we have an error that the return statement is missing we need some kind of a return instruction so that we can define where the coroutine ends in the beginning of the video i showed you the yield return keyword which is used to pause the execution of the coroutine but in order for us to stop it entirely we have to use in the yield break keyword now that our coroutine is ready, let's start it. In order for us to start a coroutine, we have to use the start coroutine method. We can either pass the name of the coroutine as a string parameter. We can also use the name of expression as writer suggests. Or the other way is to pass the enumerator itself like this. And now when you go back to Unity and press play, we can see that we get a collision detected message in the console. Now that we know that the coroutine is working, let's add a bit more functionality to it. First off, I would like to change the color of the cube. So let's add in a material. And in here, I will change the color of the cube. I will make it so the coroutine would pause for a few seconds and then change the color of the cube. So you would return new wait for seconds. Let's say two seconds. And if, if we have at least one yield return statement, we don't need the yield break. I made a nice looking red material, which the coroutine is going to apply to the cube. And press space, wait for two seconds, and the cube is pink. I of course forgot to add the red material to the script component attached to the cube. So now if I try it again, it works. I also made a very simple particle system that can act as a damage effect. And now in Rider, I can add a serialized field so that I can reference the particle system. And in here, in the place of the debug.log, I can, I can play the effect. And also, I guess I should probably re rename it to a damage effect I made the particle system a child of the cube and in here I'll add a reference to the script and now let's try it yeah it looks a bit better I guess I hope but I think one thing is missing and that's a sound effect so let's quickly download an effect from freesound.org. Let's say this one. I will add an audio source to the cube. Add the audio clip. Now back to the code. Let's add a reference to the audio source. Initialize it and start. And in here, I can say I will wait for another two seconds and then I should probably space them out. And then after those two seconds, I can play the audio clip. Play one shot. No. clip. So what we have done now is that we have split our coroutine into three parts. First, we play a particle system, then we wait for two seconds. After those two seconds have passed, the coroutine continues. We make the color of the cube red. Then we wait for another two seconds. And after those two seconds pass, we play the audio clip. And just so it makes more sense, I would play the audio clip in the beginning. So in the beginning of the coroutine, then I will wait for two seconds, make it turn red. And at the end, I want to destroy the game object. And destroying the, the game object automatically stops, puts an end to the coroutine. 
it doesn't matter where you destroy it. If you destroy the game object, all of the coroutines that are running on this game object get stopped. Also, instead of instantly changing the color of the cube, we can apply some linear interpolation for a smooth color change. So, let's remove this line of code. I will make a variable which will hold the, the end color that we want, which would be the ground hitmat.color. Up here, I will declare a field which will reference the renderer of the cube. Initialize it at start. Now let's make the color change. And if you're wondering what does yield return null mean, it basically means stop execution here and continue the next frame. It's like those yield returns that you say wait for two seconds, but in this case, you just wait for the next frame. And in this case, every new frame, we are going to stay inside the body of the while loop until the current color of the cube becomes the same as the end color we want. After that, we exit the while loop, wait for two seconds, and then destroy the game object. So, let's now see the final result. Oh! Yeah, it works. It looks questionable, but it works. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope that I have helped you on your journey to get a better understanding of how Unity coroutines work. Like and subscribe for more content, and see you in the next video.